So when Chris at Salt Cycle said, hey, let's get you on a 115. If you don't like it, you don't have to make a review. You don't have to do anything, whatever, no big deal. And I was like, uh, all right, so I wrote it. For those of you who don't follow the channel, years ago, I used to own and ride every day the Yeti SB100. When they came out with that bike, I was so stoked because I had two friends who rode the Yeti SB 4.5. I never bought the 4.5 even though I loved it because it didn't have a water bottle holder. That might sound like a stupid reason to you, but that was my reason, okay? The 100 came out with a water bottle holder and I was in. Like I just was so stoked on that bike. It was such a sporty, lively, short travel bike. It was like riding a BMX bike like back when I was 13 years old, right? It was just so fun, so much opportunities to go out and jib around and just flick the bike around. It was just, I loved it. It was so much fun. Now today, they've, they've changed it a little bit. Um, when they first released the Yeti SB115, you might have felt the same way I did, which was kind of like wah, wah. They didn't really change the bike at all. Like, it's a, like come on, Yeti, it's a 100, right? It's the same frame as the, the SB100, which at first I was kind of like, ah, man, that's really disappointing. You know, I was, I was pretty bummed on that. Um, they bumped the rear travel from 100 to 115, and they bumped the fork from 120 to 130, which, you know, that's good. But at that point in my life, I had moved on to the Ripley after the 100. been riding the Ripley for the, the Ibis Ripley for a year and a half now. Um, so, so when Chris at Salt Cycle said, hey, let's get you on a 115, see what you like. If you don't like it, you don't have to make a review. You don't have to do anything, whatever, no big deal. And I was like, uh, all right, so I rode it. I had so much fun on this bike. This is the most fun I've had on a bike, man, in a while. It was just, I mean, it's like riding a BMX bike. It's just so much fun. In today's uh, video review, we're gonna talk about how the bike climbs, you know, this, this bike, like the Ibis Ripley, how it descends, who the bike is for, and if you stick around till the end, we'll talk about how this bike compares to other bikes in the category, including my Ibis Ripley. Everyone knows who Yeti is out of Colorado. They've been making amazing bikes. They kind of all feel like race bikes a little bit. This one doesn't. Um, head tube angle, 67 and a half degrees. Seat tube angle, about 74 degrees. Um, Link down below to uh, the description of the bike that gives you all the numbers and geometry, the different build kits. Yeti offers so many different build options on this bike. And just before we get into the review, I also want to say that Yetis have always been, in my eye, the best looking bikes available. I mean, just, they're second to none. They're absolutely stunning. Uh, you know, this bike comes in this white color, the turquoise color, or silver color. I, I have a little bit of a bias here that I just think Yeti's such a cool brand. I love the Switch Infinity uh, suspension system that they use. It's unique. It rides really high in the travel and feels very supportive. It's got all the right makings for a bike that, that I like, right? So let's talk climbing. You know, this, this bike, like the Ibis Ripley, climbs as well or better than basically any other trail bike out there, in my opinion, in my experience. There's some cross country bikes that will get the job done better, but then you're riding a like true thoroughbred cross country bike, which I guess if you're racing, that makes sense. But if you're not, might as well get a bike that's a little more fun and still climbs well. I guess maybe in some situations it doesn't pick up quite as much traction. Um, I probably, I went off of the recommended settings on Yeti's website for the suspension setup, which is incredibly easy to do. If you own a Yeti or if you're thinking of owning a Yeti, you can just go in, it's easy to put in your bike that you want and it gives you a baseline of where to start your suspension settings. Um, I probably need to take a little bit more air out. Um, you know. Uh, I probably put a little bit too much air in. That might help me find a little bit more traction, but otherwise, I thought it climbs awesome. It's incredibly efficient feeling. Um, for a trail bike, it's not gonna get much better than this. I mean, this is as good as it gets in the trail bike category. 
you know, there's other bikes in this category too. We'll talk about that at the end of the video, but um, it's good. It's really good. Um, descending. So I had an opportunity to descend on this a couple times now, or ride this bike a couple times now. I've ridden it with really lightweight cross-country wheels with more cross-country oriented tires. Um, I had an Ardent Race in the rear, which is a pretty fast rolling tire. And I had the Recon 2.4 by Maxxis in the front. Again, fast rolling, but still good traction, right? The last two rides I've been on have been with this setup with a Maxxis DHF 2.5 front tire and a 2.3 Aggressor rear tire. I believe this is how Yeti sends this bike out. To me, that's, I don't know. I think they're trying to make the bike be something that it's not. But either way, I want to try the bike with this tire setup. And look, it's great. So much traction, extra stability, makes the bike feel a little stiffer. Um, so when you're descending with this tire setup, it's significantly better than when you have the cross country tires on, right? Um, but it's slower rolling also. It doesn't climb quite as fast with this tire setup. So um, if it was me and I was buying the Yeti, the first thing that I would do personally, uh, I'd ditch this tire setup. It's just too much for this bike. It kind of robs it of its essence you know this bike is a, a really sporty flickable poppy playful bike and you know you should put some tires on to match match the rhythm of the bike right so uh when you're descending at high speeds i'm talking like over 30 miles per hour kind of six inches to 12 inches of chundery uh you know just kind of rocks and roots and stuff um the bike can get a little overwhelmed i mean it's a shorter travel bike it's kind of a short wheelbase bike also so stability kind of goes out the window as your speed starts to go like mock chicken right um most people i see out on the trail aren't going mock chicken just sending it uh and so you know the people who are looking for this bike are probably going to be satisfied with the stability of the bike um, but we pushed it pretty hard in the times that we were riding it. Um, I think this bike can probably keep up with most blue and black trails, no matter how fast you ride them. You just need to focus a little bit when that speed starts going really high, right? Because it can start to get a little overwhelmed. Small bump compliance on this bike is through the roof. So good. I mean, this bike is smoother over washboard than, you know, 150 mil travel bike it's unbelievable how good the suspension system is on this bike i'm really stoked on it you know it feels it feels really supportive but it just smooths out all that little chattery stuff which is the type of terrain you're kind of riding on this bike so yeah good job on the tune i think the the, the shock tune was spot on on this bike um on the slower speed kind of trails that have more flow to them the bike, you, you just, you'll start smiling. You need to have, like, you need to put a mirror right here on your handlebar so you can just look at yourself when you ride this bike because you'll be smiling from ear to ear. I haven't ridden a more fun bike in a long time. And that's, that's really nice. It's, <laughs> it's really nice to ride a bike that's just fun. I recently rode the Ibis Mojo 4, which is a 27.5 wheel size bike. It was so much fun. Just I was hooting and hollering the whole time. It was just fun to be on like a playful bike again. Probably not the most efficient bike or the fastest bike or yada, yada, yada. But man, that's how this feels. It just feels like a really fun bike. Um, the bike feels flexy sometimes. You can feel it flimsy. I'm not a very big rider. I'm five foot eight, riding a medium bike, weigh about 145 pounds. I used to say 140, but Corona has done a number on me. Just sitting at home and eating food all the time. Bike feels a little flimsy sometimes. So if you're a 220 pound guy, I don't know. Try to get a test drive before you buy one. It might feel a little flexy on you. Um, I'll tell you, putting stouter tires, I mean, I guess if you're a bigger guy, keep the tires that, that came on here because the, the thicker tires, uh, the DHF and the Aggressor, definitely add to the stability and the stiffness of the bike, surprisingly so. Yeah, I mean, it can feel a little flexy, but I like the bike feeling flexy. Just you can whip it in and out of situations. There's tons of maneuverability. Creating bike um, um, body separation between you and the bike is awesome. I've got a 175 millimeter um, dropper post on this bike and there's still more collar to go you know I'm five foot eight on a medium you could run a 180 dropper on here no problem I, I think it descends really well I'm, I'm not disappointed at all with how this bike is which is crazy because when I first saw the bike come out like I said earlier in the video um, I was kind of like ah, come on Yeti make a new bike don't just give us a 100 frame with different suspension on it and uh, I, I've been pleasantly surprised with it after four or five rides so who's this bike for 
Who buys a Yeti SB115? Well, someone who really gives a crap about what their bike looks like, because man, this thing is stunning. So if like an image or whatever, if you just want a sexy looking bike, this is it. I mean, you can't do any better than this. It's as good as it gets in my opinion. Attention to detail that Yeti has is just second to none. I, I leave my bikes in my living room. My wife lets me do that. I don't put them in my garage. <laughs> and I walk into the kitchen, I look in there, I just stop and look at it for a second. Just think, man, what a good looking bike. Um, so someone who cares about that is gonna like this bike a lot. Someone who wants a cross country bike, but um, still wants to keep up with their buddies on 130, 140 millimeter trail bikes, this'll do it um, pretty good. Um, so if you want a trail bike that's just as efficient and climbing, uh, good climbing as possible, this is the type of bike you're looking for. Um, that's probably a good segue into the next part of this video, uh, which is how does this bike compare to other bikes in the category? And uh, before we do that, I just want to say real quick, thank you to Salt Cycles who supported my channel so much. Should you purchase uh, this bike or another bike that Salt Cycle uh, carries, I would appreciate the support by buying the bike from them. Support the people who support me. That way I don't have to go out and get an actual sponsor. If Yeti was sending me free frames, I'd be like, buy a Yeti Trek, because I'd be under obligation to, right? So I've enjoyed maintaining my uh, autonomy of just being able to ride whatever bikes I want, and I'm not beholden to anyone to tell them which bike is best. I just ride the ones that I like, and I share my experience with you guys here on the YouTube channel. So you, know, you might be surprised at how well Chris can get you bikes. Um, I know that they have these in stock. Um, you can custom build it if you don't like the exact builds that Yeti offers. I know they offer a lot of SRAM parts like X01 and GX uh, groups. If you want an SLX or an XTR group, or if you want to try different suspension, you know, Chris is your guy at Salt Cycles. He'll get you set up. Um, and then also you can click the links below this video that'll take you to all the stuff that I wear and the bike if you want to purchase it there. That's also a huge support of mine too. Uh, I get paid a small commission on those links that you click and end up buying. Uh, so let's compare this bike right away to the Ibis Ripley. The Ibis Ripley has had my heart for the last year and a half. I love the bike. It can't be dethroned. Best bike in the world. Just ask me, I'll tell you. Where does the, the SB115 come into that picture, okay? Well, it feels more playful and more fun and more sp sporty than the Ibis Ripley, certainly. Um, when you come through a corner, especially more modern bikes, I also have a Yeti SB130 Lunch Ride right now. Um, if you don't follow the channel, I, I, that's a bike I've had for a couple months now. That bike in a corner, it just wants to blow the corner and not complete the turn. Unless you really get forward on the bike, give a lot of rider input in those corners, especially the slower speed corners, right? It just wants to, um, you know, understeer and just blow the corner. And so it takes a lot of work to ride that, that bike. This bike, the exact opposite. This bike wants to spin out in the corner and do a Brody. I mean, it's just so sporty. It's like a high horsepower rear wheel drive BMW that just wants to go do burnouts and Brodies all day long in the church parking lot, right? It's just really, really fun. It gets through corners so easy. You can be late in a corner. Tilt, tilt that bike in just a little bit with your hips and bam, it completes the turn. It's amazing. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun. You know, you can kind of get late into a turn and still whip it in there. It's kind of fun just to, you can ride this bike in a different way than you can ride most modern geometry, geometry bikes, including my Ibis Ripley. Ripley is a very balanced bike and, and does really well, but this is certainly more sporty. You can ride this off the back of the bike. You can get forward on it. Psh whatever it's very easy to ride um you know comparing it to like the transition spur the spur is much more like my uh sb130 lunch ride it, it, it has that it's a short travel bike like this one right it's in this category that the transition spur is but same thing it just wants to blow those corners it does really well high speed it's more stable than this bike certainly that bike can feel a little just like point it and shoot which you know there's a place for that too that's not my gig but there's a place for that that for sure in the, in the mountain bike world. Um, I would say this is most comparable. Uh, it's not quite on the same level as the Ibis Ripley in the way that it rides. It's, it's kind of like the Revel Ranger that I recently rode. Um, you know, although the Ranger is still even more like the Ripley, this is just unique. It's just kind of a, a bike of its own. It has a lot of cross country type uh, feel to it, but it's not a purebred, uh, cross country bike that's harsh and uh, super unfun, unfun, not fun to, to ride, you know? Um, 
Yeah, I think this, this is uh, in the category, you know, I would say it climbs every bit as good as the Ripley and the Spur and those other bikes. They all, they all climb, kind of climb similar. Um, I, I'd say the Ripley or the Ranger maybe climb a little bit better, it, it, just in the, the sections of the trail where you might lose traction. Um, again, I need to just take a little more air pressure out of this shock, actually. Anyway, we are splitting hairs here. I know that's probably not what you want to hear because you guys are getting ready to make a big five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar decision, and you guys want me to say buy this bike or that bike. But um, you know, it's not quite as stable as the Ripley. Certainly not as stable as the Transition Spur Descending. But it's of all those bikes that I've ridden in recent memory that kind of fit this short travel trail bike, 29er trail bike, I'd say hands down most fun bike, certainly. It just is so playful and so fun. I don't think it's going to get you into a situation where it's like, ah, oh, man, I wish I had a more stable bike. I don't think you're going to run into that. Just, I don't know, grip the bars a little tighter and uh, give it hell, you know, just let it rip. It might, might bump you around just a little bit more, but, you know, everyone's got, you know, 18 inches of travel right here. I think people forget that. And there's my suspension, right? Uh... I guess if that's the theory, then you could just ride a hardtail, which I'm not gonna do. If you're gonna hang your hat on, you want a bike that's fun, you've really gotta give this a serious look. It's, it's as fun as any bike I've ridden in recent memory. And if you're a heavier guy, um, maybe put that in the notebook that, that this is maybe a little bit more flimsy than the Transition Spur or the Revel Ranger. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this review today. I had a great time riding this bike. It's been freezing cold lately, so it was really difficult to go out and get footage. My batteries kept freezing and they wouldn't work out in the cold. Today was warm enough that I was able to actually get some footage. But uh, anyway, thanks for supporting the channel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, stick around. I try to ride as many bikes as I can, share my experience with you guys. Um, if you own a Yeti SB100 or a 115, share your experience in the comments down below because a lot of people looking to buy this bike are going to lean heavily on my experience that I shared in my video today, but also your experience that you might want to share in the comment section down below. Hit the like button. That's how Google helps. Uh, that's how, how we help Google know that people like the video and, and more people will watch it. And that helps me and supports me so I can keep making videos like this. You know, this could be replacing my Ibis Ripley. I had so much fun on it.